Good afternoon, and thank you for allowing me to present. Um, I'm Ali Hertz. I'm a, actually a urology resident at Madigan, so I appreciate you letting me participate in this mostly general surgery cohort, but this is definitely a topic that sh is applicable across, across all surgical fields. So um, I have no disclosures. Um, just for some background, as we all know, robotic surgery is being taken up at an exponential rate as compared to other types of surgery, and it's kind of revolutionizing how we're doing surgery. As this happens, uh, we are kind of lagging behind in how we are training and continuing to maintain skills for robotic and laparoscopic surgery um, and evolving how to have a program in place at each specific residency program as to how to best train residents. Uh, virtual reality surgical simulators are one of the leading ways currently uh, to aid with training, but they've never been directly compared across the different surgical simulators. So. Our aims in the study were to compare the face and content validity of, three, validity of three different commercially available robotic surgery simulators. There are actually five total. Two are not available in the United States and were excluded from our uh, discussion for that reason. And then compare pricing and availability of the simulators and assess those implications. Um, so this was an observ observational cohort study. Uh, we recruited 15 participants, somewhat willingly, uh, to complete at least one task per simulator. So rotating amongst the three simulators and completing a task, and then they were then asked to complete a, uh, a face and content validity questionnaire following that. And then um, statistical analyses were performed. They were also asked to complete a demographics questionnaire, and then commercially available simulators were then uh, investigated for different pricing. So these are the uh, questionnaires that we use for face and content validity. These were previously validated at another simulation study from our institution. Uh, face validity for uh, the group is just the uh, amount of realism that the participant uh, perceives while they're using the simulator. And this was on a one to five Likert scale. Content validity alternatively is the utility or usefulness as a teaching modality. Um, going into the results, this is just our general demographics. Our mean age was 29. The majority of our participants were male, and the majority of our participants were um, trainees with the mean year being a PGY2. Um, specialty, there were predominantly general surgeons, so I was able to recruit some of my urologists to come participate. Um, relatively low number of total robotic cases, as this was a mostly a trainee group at 7.53. Um, and then none of the participants, including the attendings participating, had had a military deployment. Um, so looking at the comparison between simulators, what we see here are a face validity mean and a content validity mean um, of essentially around four and three point, so 4.5 and 4.6, looking at the face and content for the Da Vinci uh, surgical simulator, uh, which is, otherwise known as the backpack. It sits on top of the console. And I'll have a picture in just a moment, kind of better able to describe those. Uh, you probably have it at your institution sitting on the back of your robotic console, uh, and it comes with its own set of preloaded tasks. The DV trainer may be sitting in your guys' simulation center. It is the kind of gear and uh, rig pulley system, along with the stereoscopic viewer. And then the newer robotics mentor, again, has a stereoscopic viewer, but does not have the uh, uh, kind of rigged system. So overall, good overall face and content validity at around 80% feeling that this was a good simulacrum of reality looking at the face validity. And then most people thought these would, would be useful in terms of training uh, environments. When we look at those in comparison with each other, the Da Vinci Surgical Simulator, which is essentially sitting on the console, it, you, it's unsurprising to see that those kind of had the highest scores and were statistically significant as compared to um, the Mimic DV trainer, which is the rig and pulley system, um, which if anybody's ever used it is cumbersome and not typically very easy to use. So that's sort of intuitive, that it was more useful and more realistic to um, what's going on in a real robotic surgery. Interestingly, the Symbionics, uh, formerly known as 3D Systems Robotics Mentor, uh, is the newest of the group and has just undergone its own validity as a, as a simulator, uh, was very similar in scores to the uh, backpack simulator. 
and had a trend towards significance over the Mimic DB trainer. Um, and this kind of leads us into pricing. So just so if you were having trouble visualizing what I was saying or wasn't sure if you or weren't sure you had it at your institution, on the left we have the DaVinci Surgical Skills Simulator or the backpack. In the middle we have the robotics uh, mentor. And then on the far right, the Mimic DB trainer. Um, when we're looking at cost comparisons within them, uh, the robotics mentor and the Mimic DB trainer are similar in pr price at approximately $120,000 to $130,000. Um, the trainer for the DaVinci Surgical Simulator itself is a bargain at $80,000, but that's uh, taking into the fact that you have a quote unquote sunk cost of having the console already there. The trade off there is that this is taking away, anytime it's being used for a training environment, it's not being used in a surgical environment. And at a price of about $500 a minute in the operating room, that's a significant price trade off if you're using it for mostly training. So then programs are kind of faced with, well, do we buy an additional console at $500,000, kind of taking away any sunk costs that you may have had. So this is all to say that the, all three of the simulators have good face and content validity. Uh, the available surgical simulators that don't have impact our surgical uh, output um, are similar in cost and availability, but is not quite as good as the uh, Da Vinci Surgical Skill, Skill Simulator. I think it's exciting that the Robotics Mentor has the trend towards being more similar to the backpack and um, perhaps being a better option for the future. So weaknesses of the study, it's a small cohort. This is not atypical for um, simulation research, especially in robotics, just looking across the literature. And no, there was no limit put as to what type of program the individuals chose, which there's a variety available on across all the platforms from just basic skills to entire procedures. Those, the entire procedures are not available on the backpack and would be a source of future um, investigation. So this isn't to say, hey, this is the best one for your training program, but it's just to put it into a frame of mind that if you have one of these, they all have good face and content validity, and if you're looking to buy one for your program, this would be, this could be a good kind of nudge in the right direction. Thank you very much.